Hello everyone, this is Ella Aquarela and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super easy masking technique, really great for beginners. And I'm gonna be painting some leaves. So I went on a walk the other day in the park and I took this picture, I was looking above and I thought it was such a great picture to try to do a masking technique with. So I'm going to make it super simple and really fun. You can do this with any type of watercolors, any type of watercolor paper. I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper. It's a student grade watercolor paper. A lot of people use it. It's uh, really affordable. They sell it um, basically anywhere where they sell art supplies. You can get it at Walmart, you can get it at Michaels, Hobby Lobby basically anywhere, so really easy to find. But you can use any type of paper that you have, like any type of watercolor paper or mixed media paper that takes water well. We're gonna be using a lot of masking tape today for this technique. So what I'm gonna do is, I love to paint with really wet on wet and just get paint all over the place, right? But if I wanna mask areas and you don't have masking fluid, it's really hard to preserve those whites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve whites with my masking tape. So I want to paint those leaves that you saw in the picture, but I want to do the background first and I want to do the background wet on wet. So it's really hard to do a background wet on wet if you don't have whatever's going to be in the foreground masked. So what I did was I thought maybe if I take some masking tape and I cut it, and I kind of cut it into the shape of a leaf. It can be any leaf shape that you want. I'm doing this really basic leaf shape because the leaves in my picture are kind of the shape and that didn't come out that well. I'm trying to cut this through the camera lens like looking at the camera lens instead of looking at my hand. <laughs> so here's a leaf made out of masking tape and I'm just gonna place it somewhere in my painting. So I did this, eh, let me see, I'm gonna put it over here. And that's how I got all these leaves in this paper. If you notice, there's like leaves that are cut so what I did was with a little bit of uh, watercolor um, um, pencil, sorry, I made some lines where I thought the the stems were going to be for the leaves. And there's like a, a thick branch that runs through here in the painting. So I want to I wanted to leave that part not like unmasked. So if you see, there is that kind of branch. So that's why. I left that gap right there because I'm going to put the branch running through here. All right. So once you do that, you can cut them in different shapes, sizes. I made some smaller ones, some bigger ones. So, uh, you know, to give the sensation of leaves that are further or closer. And I'm going to just start painting now. So I'm going to use some student grade watercolors because I think this is such a great technique for beginners that it deserves some student great watercolors to go with it. I'm gonna use my Van Gogh watercolor set and a Master Touch number eight synthetic brush. And I got this brush at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can see it there. It's synthetic, but it keeps a fine point it's great for beginners. I think it was like five bucks with a coupon, so not bad. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this entire paper. And the easier way to do that is with a spritzer bottle. So I'm just going to spritz the whole thing. If you don't have a spritzer bottle, don't worry. Take any brush, the bigger the better, and just like wet your paper with your brush. And to be on the student grade kind of 
line here. I'm using a Crayola brush for this because you can use any brush to wet your paper. You don't need any fancy brushes. I'm actually going to spritz my paints as well just to get them a little bit started there and I can lift the so I can lift the pigment easier. So I'm going to pick some greens. I'm going to maybe I'm going to get this green. Let me see what this green is. Have a little color chart here that I keep with the set. I think this is a sap green. Yeah, this is a sap green. So that's good. I'm gonna use some sap green. Again, use any paints you have and any colors you want. You don't have to make leaves green. You can make them any color you want. All right. And I want to maybe give this a little depth and a little character, not just use it straight out of the pan. So I'm mixing that with Azo Yellow and Vermilion just to give that some depth. And actually, you know what? I might use the, do they have a phalo? Yes, this is the phalo. I might use the phalo green. Phalo green is a bit more dark, like intense, I should say, green. All right, so now let's start painting. So I'm going to look at my picture and see where I see clumps of leaves in the background. And I'm just going to paint, put paint on. And I don't really care about it looking as, like separate leaves because I have the separate leaves in the foreground. I just want to give the impression that there's something in the background some other type of greenery so I'm just taking the vermilion with some sap green with some phalo blue sorry phalo green I'm sorry geez I am all over the place today and I'm going to also put in a, some blue in between to make it seem like there's sky so you're looking up So I'm just, I left some white spaces as you can tell before, and I'm just filling it with blue. So it looks like there is light. So now this blue, I think it might be too dark. So I'm just going to lighten it up to make sure we don't lose our lights. Keep the light because we are looking up into the sky. And we don't want it to seem like it's covered. So there we go. We got some paint moving around. Let's tilt our board and maybe get that paint moving and going into other places. I might just like add darker spots. Maybe with like a darker blue too. Oh my goodness. This is what happens when you don't use the paint that often. It comes out of the pan because it's the bottom of it is dried. It's not stuck to the pan anymore. Little watercolor mishap there. It's okay. So reason why I am continuing to spritz this is because I feel like the paper is constantly drying. So a spritzer bottle is kind of handy in these types of situations by the way I'm using ultramarine deep here I've added ultramarine deep because I wanted darker um, background colors so when you have this type of masking technique and whatever is covered by the tape is going to be lighter you want it to have contrast versus the paint next to it so that's going to make it more interesting to the eye so I'm just putting dabs of darker paint using the ultramarine so that when we take this tape off the difference 
between the edge of the leaf and the background it's more noticeable and it pops more that is why i'm doing that now i think that's good for our first layer i'm going to wipe the edge of this up there's some water in the bottom here we want to pick that up so it doesn't pull there and give us some blooms just wiping it all I noticed that some of the leaves have paint so I might actually wipe them off as well all right that layer is dry so we're looking good for our next step now I want to paint the branch some of the branches actually actually want to paint the big branch fat branch because I want it to let me look at my this is why it's good to have uh, okay I want to use sepia it's good to have a swatch card of your paints because sometimes you forget <laughs> where they are so here's where my big stem was. It's thicker, eh, it's not really, a little bit thicker at the bottom than at the top. Um, actually, I messed up because I should make this as thick as the gap between the leaves. And I did it. It's okay. And I'm gonna give it some angle here and make it go this way cool it's really simple that's it and now you can just take some of that paint and like make little branches going so that connects the leaves and make them with like fast strokes don't do soft strokes because it's to look yeah these kind of have angles and things so it's interesting and take advantage of the fact that you still have the masking tape there So that you can go over any of these leaves with the paint and nothing's going to happen. It's the beauty of masking. So I'm going to do this. That one doesn't have one. We'll see. So I have a random leaf over here by itself. I'm actually gonna do something about that in the next step after I take some of this tape off I'm just looking at the leaves to make sure they all they're all kind of connected I love techniques that are fun and easy sometimes you have like artist block you just can't think of what to paint or what to do and this is a good exercise just to have fun with the paint play around and get your creative juices flowing i'm gonna put another branch there and another branch here even though they don't have leaves because i want to put leaves afterwards so one of the things i love about watercolor is negative painting and um layers the transparent layers are just so beautiful and it's hard to do sometimes at least for me it is to do negative painting and have it come out good because then I don't know where to paint you know it's like I I'm just not that well trained to paint negative painting I haven't practiced enough too so I feel like when you have these type of techniques that you can kind of foolproof um, the whole 
take like idea it just helps so much and then it, i'm sure it will help if you actually want to do real negative painting without masking all right this layer is dry i'm really liking how this is looking even with the blue leaves it looks really good i really like it all right so this is the the nice part we're going to take off some of these leaves it's actually warm from the blow dryer because <laughs> i blew it out and it helps to remove painter's tape when you blow it out so so th these leaves i'm not actually going to throw them out i am going to put this leaf i'm just going to put this leaf over here kind of on top of those two if you see what i mean so we're going to take off some of these all right i repositioned some of these leaves so I'm going to do another layer. I'm going to make a lighter green. So I'm going to take the sap green and add some of that ASO yellow. I think that gives us a good color for the leaves that are in the, for, in the foreground. Yes. So, okay. Just mixing enough of it so that I don't have to go back and mix the whole thing again. Mm. All right, I think this is good. So I'm gonna go for these leaves that are in the foreground and I'm gonna paint some of them in. I'm actually gonna make this more watery to make it lighter, I feel like it's too dark. There we go. And if you want, you can leave a little bit of, of white border in between the background and the leaves. It's up to you. Sometimes I like to leave it. It helps the foreground pop. So I'm just gonna put this light green all around. And now where I reposition the leaves, that's gonna li leave an impression for a leaf that's kind of gonna go on top. So after we finish, whoops, this layer, we will dry it. We will remove the remaining tape and we will paint those leaves all right i painted all the leaves light green one thing i wanted to do was also add some color variation to kind of just give the impression that there's some shadows here so i took some of the darker green that we use for the background and i'm just placing it on some of the leaves and thinning it out with the lighter especially with the leaves that are behind other leaves. So you see this leaf is behind another leaf. I want there to be kind of the impression of a shadow. Makes it more interesting. And also I noticed in the background, I used a little bit of ultramarine. I mentioned that color granulates and um, for those Folks that don't know what granulation means, it's basically the pigment particles kind of separate. They're a little bit thicker and you can see some texture on the paper. So it makes things look more interesting, I think. So I like that granulation that happened there. I really like how that's coming along. It looks really pretty. So now I'm going to remove the rest of the leaves that were here. Actually, I left some of these in the background because I wanted to, um, but I didn't do it, to do negative painting for some of those leaves. So that leaf, for example, that's there. I wanted to do a little bit of negative painting just to give the impression that there's a leaf there. But I don't want to 
not disturb the background too much. So what I did was I just put some paint and I am kind of thinning it out so that you don't have any hard lines and just smoothing it out with clean water. If you're not called out clean water, it's not clean anymore, but it doesn't matter. All right, so now that's dry. So I'm gonna peel off the rest of the leaves that are here. Oh, that leaf, I saw I put it on top of. So you see how there's an impression of a leaf there? It's very faint. That's what I was going for. Here's another one, very faint impression of a leaf. Now this one, for some reason, I thought I had placed that one later and I didn't, so I lost track of my leaves. It's okay. <laughs> no harm done. Just gonna fill it in with some lighter watercolor there. Cause you know what? It's okay. Happy accidents, doesn't matter. So now, we have these, um, areas sorry about the shaky camera again we have these areas that have the white masking still in there so i want to paint a leaf here that's transparent and that you can see through i just want to see what that looks like so i'm gonna put one here so it'll be kind of faint when it touches the background but you get that interesting kind of play of colors where it overlaps with the other leaves. I kind of really like how that looks. That looks better than I expected it was going to look. And I'm going to put a little bit of darker paint on the edge here just so you can see it better. Again, this is student green paint, so it... Or more like the paper, because the paint is actually, Van Gogh is really good paint. But this paper lifts. So you want to try to do as, or the least amount of brush strokes possible. Because you will lift the paint below. That's what happened right there. You can see it. You have to put it in one brush stroke. Um, and it's hard sometimes to do that. So this paint also was one of those that I left off from the previous layer but at least you get the idea right even if I didn't do it perfectly or I didn't plan it as well as I should have planned it hopefully you get the idea of this technique and how fun it is all right so we're gonna do this one now so again I'm gonna try to make it with the least amount of brush strokes possible one brush stroke two brush strokes Done. I'm not doing any more brush strokes. Because otherwise, it's going to get messed up. Okay, I just put some darker paint on the, on the edge there to give it the sense of shape and depth. Ah, this paper really dries so fast. It drives me nuts. Okay. <laughs> But hey, you can do a lot with student grade paper. It's for beginners is great and it's affordable. It's just that you need to understand it, its shortcomings so you don't mess up things too much. This one. And I think there was another one over here. So you can do this a different way. Uh, you can also put paint the leaves, all the leaves, this light green color, and then uh, like put tape over the green color and do negative painting that way, that's also could make for a really interesting effect. So I think that's it for these leaves. I really like the way it's looking, looking really good. Now I think I wanna make some just um, veins on the leaves. 
So I'm going to mix this phthalo blue again. Phthalo green, sorry. I don't know why I keep calling it the wrong name. Phthalo green with the vermilion. So green and red. Really simple. Maybe a little yellow. So this is a stick. This is a just a twig from a tree that was laying around. I sharpened the point. You can see that. Um, kind of like a pencil. So what I'm going to do is I am going to try to get the point wet with the paint. I just want like a really light, there we go. line for the stem and I want to do it quick in a swift movement and with the brush it's just really hard because when you press on it it's gonna give you a thicker line so oh my god sorry about that and see I just messed up this part of the leaf boo boo sucks I'm gonna try to, oh, to fix it Probably gonna ruin it more than fix it, but I'll give it the shape of the background leaf. There we go. Okay, well, hopefully that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to keep doing this. So I'm gonna try to do kind of those veins on the leaves. I don't wanna do every single vein because you know what? You don't need to get all the details in there. You just need to be able to, you know, give the idea, give the viewer the idea that there are some veins in those leaves. So I will leave some leaves without veins and I will put veins on others. This doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I think we're good with these veins. They're looking really good. I got this idea from the, for the twig from Karen Bryce. She has a great YouTube channel with lots of advice and ideas for watercolor artists so I highly recommend that you visit that channel all right so that's it I'm really happy with how this painting came out I'm definitely going to be using this technique again probably for other subjects too not just leaves but I think it works particularly well for leaves because I have personally a hard time when I'm painting leaves like this to get the background um to get a nice background wet on wet background without disturbing the foreground leaves so this definitely helps to fix that problem for me at least and i hope it helped you to get inspiration or learn something new so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more videos like these please subscribe down below and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.